What is going on everybody? This is Jason with Get More Outdoors. I try to encourage people to get more outdoors and enjoy everything it has to offer. I haven't been doing any trapping this year. Every year I normally do a little bit of hobby trapping and I process the furs and then I make crafts with it. I haven't had any time to this year. However, this morning I had this big boar coon decide to commit suicide and he ran right out underneath my truck. Tried to avoid him. I wasn't able to. And being the kind of person that I am, I wasn't about to let him just lay there and go to waste. So I did stop. I turned around and picked him up. So we're going to go ahead and hurry up and skin this guy out. Won't take but a, but a second. Wasn't something I planned on doing, but since I'm going to do it, I'm going to show you guys how to go about actually doing that. Now, I did say it was a big boar coon. Take into account we are in Alabama. I know if I have somebody from the north that ends up watching this, they're probably going to look at this and go, hey, that's not a big coon. I've lived up there. I understand. For you guys, this would be a small coon. For us, though, this is a full, mature, not huge, but he's a pretty good sized boar coon for down here. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hang him up so I can grab a hold of that back leg. I'm gonna grab the other leg so I can go ahead and stretch them out and make a real good precise cut. And basically what you're gonna wanna do is right here where that fur changes. There's kind of a, a uh, line right there. You can tell where the fur kind of changes. You're gonna make a straight cut between his little privates and his vent and you're going to come straight out to the heel. I'm going to go ahead and ring the foot. notice I'm probably going to swap back and forth knives a couple of times and that's because whenever I'm whenever I'm cutting I know I'm going to be cutting into bone I go ahead and use a little serrated blade that way I can keep my good blade sharp we're just going to go ahead and get that foot started and you don't want to cut into the hide you're going to cut right there just that little bit of membrane that is trying to hold the hide the, the, the skin onto the meat all right I've got it started should be just be able to grab it and pull it down I'm going to go ahead and swap sides. Get your little foot in there. Go ahead and swap sides and do the same thing to the other side. We go right here, you see where it goes from this kind of white belly fur and then it goes to the darker back fur. going to run straight down that line. Same process, we're going to ring the foot. Swap over to our good knife. And we're just going to kind of pull on the skin. And just using the very tip of your knife, all you're going to do is go in there and just kind of free up that the skin by just gently hitting that membrane that is holding it up against the meat. Same thing, take it and pull it down. Now we're going to swap over to the gambrel.
All right, so we've got it swapped over to the gambrel. And so, did I mention this is going to be just a little bit graphic? Okay, so we've got it split all the way across the hide pulled down right here on the tail at the base of the vent. We're going to cut in and we're going to basically cut a triangle patch on either side of the vent to connect to that cut that we previously made. Off one side. And right up and over to the, to the other side. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to be right down the center of this tail. I'm going to go ahead and split it just a few inches, maybe an inch or two. And that's plenty. Now we're going to come back up to this little triangle patch that we just cut. And just using the tip of the knife, I'm just going to touch the connective tissue and get this started. And you'll see that we're actually going to be using the knife very little. With most animals, there is absolutely no reason to knife a hide off. Right here, around its little boy parts, I'm not really concerned about using my knife because that's going to get end up getting trimmed off later. You see I nicked a hole in it. That little patch is going to get trimmed off later anyhow. We got past its boy parts and we're just going to put some weight into it and pull straight down. We go back to the back. Skin it around, show you all a slick little trick for this, and this works good up around the front forearms. I've rounded the end of this piece of rebar off so there's no sharp jagged edges. And you can also use a butcher's steel like you'd sharpen a knife. But we're going to come in here, we're going to force it through, we're going to roll it down. that freed up we're just going to go ahead and remember before I split the tail just a couple of inches we're just going to go ahead and carefully always using our knife point cutting cutting towards the meat not down cutting towards the meat that way you don't nick the fur or the hide rather and we're just going to go ahead and roll that skin down you see I've got the skin rolled over itself. Take your time with this right in here, especially if it's your first time. Because the skin on the tail of most animals is really easy to tear. I'm going to use my little tail strippers. We're going to come up here above the fur and grab it. And unfortunately, that does happen sometimes.
No worries, this is not the first time I've had that happen. Will pop, and there goes a perfectly good coon tail. Make sure you shake it out so there's no wrinkles in the tail, and then we're just going to carefully slip our blade up inside and split it straight down the middle. All the way to the end. Got the tail stripped out. Now we can just use a little body weight and push straight down on it. Take that little hideous thing off of there. Gingy! She's inside. And we're just gonna pull the front. I'm gonna pull the back, and I'm just kind of making a fist with the hide and getting choking, choking up onto it and rolling my knuckles down. Now, once you get it to pull down as far as you can, once again, we're just going to cutting in towards the body of the cone or whatever critter you may be working with. We're just going to come straight in. We're about to get up to the front arms. I'm really not using my knife a lot. Yeah, that truck tore him up. I'm really not using my knife a lot. I'm actually pulling on the hide and then just hitting that connective tissue very lightly. Once you get most of the way through, you can shove your rebar or whatever you're using right underneath that elbow and just pull it down. One arm. my finger and my thumb sometimes especially on a coon if it's not really big you can actually use your finger and thumb and force it through there but if it gets tough go back to your metal rod you're gonna ring out this foot Over to our serrated knife because we're going to be cutting up against a lot of bone. I don't want to wear out my other blade. You see the whole time I'm just putting tension on this hide pulling down where you can see it makes this little white line of connective tissue and you're cutting straight into the body. Now we're getting right up close to the ears. You're going to be able to, this, if it's the first time you've done it, it may be a little confusing, 
but you can see it right there not sure if it shows up on the camera but you'll be able to feel it that cartilage at the base of his ear you're just going to cut straight into the head now you've got a little bit of a finger hold where it'll help pull the hide The other side, straight into the head. Always cutting straight in to the body. You're never cutting down because you don't want to nick the hide up any more than you don't want to nick it at all. Then you're going to be sewing holes up. That's no fun. All right, straight into the head, and we're getting right to the eyeball. I'm going to cut straight in. As you're putting tension on this, now a raccoon's hide is really durable. You can actually pull on it pretty good without fear of, of ripping it. Once you're up here to the head, it's basically all knife work. You're pulling on the hide, you're putting tension on it, but it's, it's not going to just pull free. So you're going to have to cut the hide loose to free it up. Now right here you see I've finally got the jaws exposed. There is really no need for that, the last little bit of this bottom lip right here. Unless you were actually maybe saving this for a uh, mount for the taxidermist, but otherwise you're never really going to use that bottom lip, so I just go ahead and cut it off right there and leave that little patch of fur on. see I'm just cutting straight into the head now we're gonna get down here to the nose and a raccoon has a fairly long nose if it's the first time you've done one you may want to just as soon as you hit that cartilage cut it off and then cut whatever you, uh, whatever excess off after the fact I'm going to go ahead and skin it down a little bit. What I've got is I've got my finger underneath here so I can actually feel where the tip of his nose is and I'm kind of pushing on it. And I'm going to skin it down to where I feel comfortable with it. And then cut right through that cartilage. So. And that's how you skin out a raccoon. Now it's always easier to flesh a raccoon because of the way their, their fat is. They have a really greasy fat to them. And I always find it easier to put them in a couple of bags, wrapped up with the flesh side in, put it in a couple of bags and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. It just hardens that fat up and makes them flesh out so much easier.